Hey folks, welcome back to the lesson on trigonometry and area. This is going to be the third video, and we're going to wrap it up with finding area of polygons, but with uh, more challenging examples. Now, if you remember, we are using some older material in the way of trigonometry and in the way of the area of regular polygons and how regular polygons work remembering vertex angles, remembering pop-out triangles, and how to figure all of that out. We did a few examples in the second video, so make sure you're following that before jumping into this, because these videos, uh, these last two examples, are a little bit challenging. So, let's jump in. Two more examples. The first in finding area, we have a stop sign, a regular octagon. And if you recall, an octagon has eight sides. So we're going to find a regular octagon. The standard size has a 16.2 inch radius. Now that is important because we don't know anything yet that we need. So if they give us the radius of 16.2 inches, we don't know anything that we need to know. Because remember, in order to find the area, we have to find the area of a regular polygon by multiplying 1 half the apothem times the perimeter. This 16.2 inches does not give us perimeter. In order to find perimeter, we need to know what the side lengths are. And in order to find what the side lengths are, we need to know about more about our pop-out triangle. So we have no information. We also don't have the apothem, because this is the radius. Our apothem goes here. We don't know enough information. So what we need to do is use a little bit of trigonometry. So the first thing we're going to do is make our pop-out triangle so we can work with something we can see. Now remember what we know. We know we have a 16.2 inch radius. <clears throat> that doesn't give us much except knowing this. In the pop-out triangle, the radius is our hypotenuse. It is our hypotenuse. So when we're working with trigonometry, we're going to be dealing with a hypotenuse. So either the sine or the cosine now. Remember in the two previous examples in the last video, we worked with tangent? Well, here we might be working with something else, or both, as the case may be. So the only thing we're missing is our angle measure in the pop-out triangle. And how are we going to find that angle measure in the pop-out triangle? We need our vertex angle. And how do we find the vertex angle? We divide 360 degrees. But 360 degrees divided by what? We divide that by the number of sides. So again, remembering the note. The vertex angle is found by dividing 360 by the number of sides. So in this case, 8. So uh, we multiply, or excuse me, divide. We find out that the vertex angle is going to be 45 degrees. Now that's an interesting vertex angle because it's not very pleasant to work with. But we're going to deal with it. Because our pop-out triangle is made by the apothem, which bisects the vertex angle. So the vertex angle is going to be 45 degrees divided by 2. So what? We get a decimal. We're going to work with it. So the degree measure of our pop-out triangle is going to be 22.5 degrees. So be it, folks. So be it. So now, what are we looking for? In this triangle, what we're looking for are two different things. Okay, Remember what we need to find. We need to find the apothem, this part of the formula, and we need to find our half side so we can find the perimeter. Okay, So remember what's happening. We need to find our half side so we can find the full side so we can find perimeter. So this is all happening uh, at once, which means we need to use this pop-out triangle twice. So first things first. Let's find the half side. Okay, It doesn't matter what we do first, but I'll say let's find the half side first. So if we're going to find the half side first, we've got to look at our triangle and consider what we know. We have a degree measure. We have the half side, which is opposite. And we have a hypotenuse. Okay, So we have a degree measure. We have an opposite side and a hypotenuse. So which trig function will we be looking at? We'll be looking at the sine function, SOKATOA. So what we're going to do is make an equation. Okay, We're going to make the equation. We're going to say that the sine of 
is equal to the opposite, which is our half psi, what we're looking for, over the hypotenuse, 16.2. And if we're going to solve this equation for the half side, <clears throat> that means we're going to multiply both sides by 16.2. So that means my half side, my half side is going to be equal to 16.2 times the sine of 22.5. Okay, that's going to be my half side. <laughs> All right, so what does that mean for the entire side? Okay, so all we have found is the half side. What does that mean for the entire side? So that means one side is going to be two times all of that stuff. 16.2 times the sine of 22.5. And that's going to be the length of my whole side. Which means what is the perimeter going to be? Holy cow, Mr. Katz, what just happened? <clears throat> Remember what we're doing. Do not get lost in the numbers. If you get lost in the numbers, this is going to be confusing. You want to follow the concept. Okay, so we have our half side, which gives us the whole side. The whole side can give us perimeter. Perimeter is found by multiplying by 8. Okay, so perimeter is going to be all of this. Right? So it's going to be everything. That is our perimeter. Yay, we found the perimeter. Now remember what we talked about in the last video, we're going to save rounding for last. So we found perimeter. 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 Now what we need is our apothem. So let's find our apothem. So we look at our triangle, we see that we're missing our apothem, and we look at what we have. We need to make an equation. We have an angle, we have an apothem, and we have a hypotenuse. And the apothem is the adjacent side. So we have an adjacent side and a hypotenuse. We have an adjacent side and a hypotenuse. Which trick function would that be? That would be cosine. OK, so now we're using SOKATOA, right? So back to SOKATOA. The adjacent side and the hypotenuse is what we're working with for the angle. All we're going to do now, write an equation. So in this case, the equation will be the cosine of 22.5 will be equal to the adjacent side, the apothem, over the hypotenuse, 16.2, which means our apothem is, well, 16.2 times the cosine of 22.5. Right, so we have now found our apothem, right? Apothem, apothem. Perimeter, perimeter. We are now ready for area. Okay, so we now know the area of our triangle is one half times the apothem, everything that's here, 16.2 cosine of 22.5 times the perimeter, that whole mess down there. Eight times two times 16.2 <clears throat> times the sine of 22.5. Okay, so all of that is happening. We're saving rounding for last. So everything for right now is calculator work. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm punching into the calculator. The first thing's first is this. And then the second thing second is this. And then the third thing third is this. I'm going to divide by 2 at the very end. So let's see what that looks like in our calculator. So the first thing I'm going to do is the apothem. Okay, so 16.2 times 22, the cosine of 22.5. How do I enter that? 22.5 cosine equals. This is the apothem. Okay? And now I'm going to multiply it by the perimeter. Okay? So that's times 8 times 2 times 16.2 times the sine of 22.5. So 22.5 sine equals. So that whole big number is just these two things put together. Okay? So it's those two things put together. And now what we're going to do is divide by 2 at the very end. Divide by 2 equals. So now we have this value, okay, this value that it all depends on, uh, on what we're being asked to do. But we save our rounding until the very end. The question asks to the nearest square inch. So once again, that's to the nearest whole number. Right, so this is what we have in our calculator, that big, big value. 
Okay, but when we round that to the nearest whole number, that's going to be 742 square inches. So our area is 742 square inches. So all of that calculator work, we save rounding till the very end. Okay, we save rounding till the very end. And I know that could be confusing because you're so busy looking at numbers, you're not paying attention to anything I'm saying. Okay, so you want to make sure you're paying attention to what I'm saying. That way you don't get lost in the numbers. All right, so let's, do, let's try another one, right? Another example. This is, gets, gets kind of crazy. And this will be the last one, all right? So I knew this is nuts. So here we go. A tabletop has the shape of a regular decagon. Whoa, what does that mean? Decagons have 10 sides, okay? Now, it has a radius of 9.5 inches. Is that helpful for us? Not exactly. What is the area of the tabletop to the nearest square inch? Again, whole number. So do we need to draw a picture for this? And the answer is no, we don't. Let's go ahead and make a pop-out triangle. OK, so remember how the pop-out triangle works. In the pop-out triangle, we have the radius along the hypotenuse. We have the apothem as one leg and the half side as the other leg. So we're dealing with a regular figure again. And since we're dealing with the regular figure and an area, we know we're going to be working with 1 half the apothem times the perimeter. OK, so we have to put all this stuff together. Now, it was giving us the radius, so that's helpful. OK, the radius is 9.5 inches. So if the radius is 9.5 inches, and we need the apothem for the apothem, and we need the half side to give us the whole side to give us the perimeter, right? We have to remember all that stuff. We are looking for that. So what's the only thing that's missing is our angle. What's the angle in the pop-out triangle? So how are we going to find the angle? Well, we have to find the vertex angle. So here we go again. How do we find the vertex angle without looking at a picture? Well, we got to remember what's happening. The vertex angle is found by dividing 360 by the number of sides. In this case, it's going to be 10 sides. So the vertex angle is 360 divided by 10, or 36 degrees. So if the vertex angle is 36 degrees, what is the angle in the pop-out triangle? 36 divided by 2. That's 18 degrees. <clears throat> so we have all we need to know. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So now for this one, what I'll do is find the apothem first this time to see if there's any difference, see if you notice any comparison between this and the previous uh, example. So the first thing I'll find is the apothem. And so we look at our pop-out triangle. This is the apothem. And here's our angle. And here's our hypotenuse. Now the angle and the apothem are adjacent. So the apothem is the adjacent side. And we're given the hypotenuse. So we have ah, which trig function is that? Cosine. OK, so ka. Remember, so ka toa. With this, we can set up our equation. We can say the cosine of 18 degrees is equal to the apothem over the hypotenuse. And so we have our equation set up, which means we can solve for our apothem by multiplying both sides by 9.5. So it'd be 9.5 times the cosine of 18. We've now found our apothem. Okay. Now I'm going to hold off on that because I found the apothem. Let's go on to finding the perimeter. Now in order to find a perimeter, we need the length of one side. In order to find the length of one side, we need the length of half a side. In order to find the length of half a side, we've got to use trigonometry. So let's go into perimeter. First things first, I need my half side. My half side is found by looking at the opposite compared to the hypotenuse. So my half side is looking at the opposite compared to the hypotenuse. That, of course, is the function of sine. So katoa. And so we can set up our equation. We're saying the sine of 18 is equal to the opposite side, or the half side, over the hypotenuse of 9.5 which means we now can find our half side. So our half side is 9.5 times the sine of 18. That's our half side. 
how is how we're going to find our whole side, right? So the entire side then is going to be when we multiply that by 2. So 2 times 9.5 times the sine of 18. That gives us the whole side, but that's not the perimeter, right? See how this all is linked together. The perimeter of a decagon, 10 sides, so that means the perimeter is going to be found by multiplying all of that by 10. So 10 times 2 times 9.5 times the sine of 18, that is our perimeter. So we now have all we need to know, and the rest is calculator work. Okay, so notice how I didn't crunch numbers. If you weren't listening, if you weren't listening, rewind and pay attention. Okay, so it's important to listen, listen. Otherwise, rewind and pay attention. You will get lost in the numbers if you're not paying attention. So now we go back to the area formula. Area is 1 half the apothem times the perimeter, or Area is equal to 1 half the apothem, that crazy number, 9.5 cosine of 18, times the perimeter, that crazy number, 10 times 2 times 9.5 times the sine of 18. We plug all that in. The rest is calculator work. Okay. So uh, once again, I will walk you through calculator work. It's going to do this one first, and this one, and then lastly divide by 2. Okay. There are a couple other tricks involved in there, but uh, you can figure those out on your own. I ain't helping you with that. All right, so the first thing is first. Let's scooch that up. I will multiply 9.5 times the cosine of 18. 18 cosine equals. That is now our apothem. And now I'm going to multiply by the perimeter. Times 10 times 2 times 9.5 times the sine of 18. 18 sine equals. Okay, so now is that is my apothem times my perimeter. Lastly, I divide that by 2 equals. And so we end up with uh, 265.238 or what have you. And this is when we read the directions. Okay, so once again, we go back to the directions. And it says to the nearest square inch. And that means whole number. So the nearest whole number in our calculator is 265. Okay, so we have 265 square inches. That's, that's our area. So the area is 265 square inches. And that is how we get to use trigonometry in finding area of polygons. And that is it, folks, for the unit on the area of polygons. I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, we'll come back with some more fun geometry later. In the meantime, study, study, practice. And peace out.